Hey guys, welcome back again to another episode of the Hope Sessions podcast with me, Jerry D. You know what it is, guys. Every week we have different guests on to come on and share about their journey to faith in Christ, where the Lord has brought them from, but also what he's doing in their life. And I really mean this, right? You know, oftentimes when you think of introducing guests, you kind of can run out of ideas with some of them because you've got too many stories. But I know this brother, Dara, um, probably about, I would say, less than a year and I met him in our church. He's been in our church for quite a period of time in the last year or so. And I was just, one day I was doing a spoken word and this guy came down, he encouraged me. He gave me words of encouragement. And it was from that day onwards that we became friends. And then I learned that he was a Man United fan, which means that we're brothers <laughs> for life. But Dara, it really Absolutely. is. <laughs> Come on, my man, we, we are locked in for good. But Dara, honestly, man, I mean this. It is an honor to be your friend. It is an honor to be a part of the same church as you and thank you so much for coming on to the podcast how are you i'm good jerry uh, it's an absolute pleasure to to be on today and yeah i i remember that day you did the spoken word and it, it was a real blessing as have been i must say and and appreciate all of the podcasts you've done i mean it for me actually what the what was really helpful i suppose not being that long in the church some of the earlier podcasts i listened to where you did interviews with some of the pastors and some of the other folks in the church, it actually gave me a an insight just to actually get to know people, which yeah. was actually really great. It kind of gave me a bit of a head start. That's right. And then as well as that, I suppose more recently, I think some of the podcasts you've been doing on the scriptures have really, really blessed me. There's a couple will stay in my head forever because for personal reasons, they yeah. they met me at a point in time um, when I was going through something. So, yeah. you know, I do want to appreciate that, Jerry, and express that uh, you're doing a really great work. And yeah, it's been great to to get to know you. Great yeah. to become your friend. And we have the old Man United bond, of course, which will which will endure beyond everything else as well as the gospel. Absolutely. Absolutely, Dara. I love it. Dara, we're going to kick it off with a rapid fire round. Are you ready? Yeah, absolutely. Are you nervous? A little. Don't be. A rapid fire round. There's no <laughs> such thing as a right or wrong answer. Um, we are okay. going to go. Dara, what's your favorite sport? Uh, soccer. Yeah, so your favourite team is? Yeah. Man United. <laughs> and just, just for reference there, people will say, oh, Man United are having an awful season. We're, what I like to call it is we're, we're taking time off to give the rest of you all a chance yeah, exactly. to catch up. We had to let the other half of the city have a bit of, you know, have a few years, like, you know. That's but right. I mean, our, yeah. Hallam we'll wanted to come to United, but we wanted him to go somewhere else that he could be great somewhere else while we're becoming exactly. great ourselves. We're building up a better team. And hopefully in years to come, we will have many Premier League trophies back in our grasp. But for now, we're in the rebuilding stage. Jerry, I started following Man United in the Ron Atkinson era. That's how long ago that is now. And they were terrible. Yeah. And I saw them become great. They're not so great again. And they'll come yeah. back again. I've been That's seen right. it all with them. And we'll see, we'll see the good days again. Absolutely, absolutely, Dara. Dara, are you a morning or a night person? Morning, definitely. Is there any particular reason maybe as to why that is? I just, I wake up, I'm fresh. I, I just love the morning. I love the quietness of the mornings. Okay. And I just find it nice. I get, you know, I, I'm I'm fine till about 10 or 11. And after that, I start to kind of go downhill. I, my brain starts going to mush. Okay. So definitely morning. Um, my brain wakes up in mush <laughs> and then wakes up as the evening progresses into the late night. So the yeah, 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 night. yeah. Um, yeah. Dara, what's your favourite meal? Anything Indian. Okay. Um, also a great cheeseburger. Wow. And then oh. off the back of that, what's your least favourite meal? Who? Do I have one? Um, actually, there is a meal... <laughs> I get into trouble for this now. There's a meal that Sam oh. used to make, and I and I and I banned it. It was it was called moussaka. I think it's a Greek dish or something like that, mm -hmm. um, with eggplant and stuff. And I couldn't abide it. Couldn't abide it. <laughs> so that's probably my least favorite. I love the fact that you said you banned it. I've never heard a guest say that. How how did you <laughs> manage to ban it? That's quite a strong statement. Yeah, well, it's probably overstating it a bit. I, I, uh, I, I requested that we we not have that. Requested very strongly that we not have that meal anymore. Brilliant. You put the foot <laughs> down, as they say, huh? Put the foot down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and Dara, what's your, your favorite music genre? Um, 
I suppose, well, I love worship music primarily, I guess. Apart from that, I've always been, I mean, I, I, I'd learned the piano when I was young. Okay. So I've always loved classical music. Uh, still do. Don't listen to it quite as much now, but anything with piano, piano concertos, piano sonatas, Beethoven, oh. Tchaikovsky, Chopin, Grieg, all those guys. Um, oh. Just just because I did the piano when I was young and I really got to love anything, anything piano related. I also have a soft spot for you too. So there's a mix. Ooh, bit of a Bono. <laughs> bit of, yeah, a bit of a Bono head. Wow. Yeah. I wish I could say I liked classical music. I'm not even sure if I, I can't even qualify my statement as respect because I haven't listened to it enough. My friend yeah. Jordan, you know Jordan, Pastor Nick's son. Yeah. Yeah, um, he I studied do. classical music in, in college, done a master's in it, and that. And he took me to see a an opera in the Omniplex Cinema in Mahan Point, probably about five or six years ago. I have no problem with the opera. Look, I didn't like it, but I went to support him. But it was in Italian, yeah. so I was just I'm jealous. <laughs> it was. I I couldn't even put it into words. I just said to Jordan, and, and next time we're going to a movie, I'm gonna pick it. Yeah. So, so respect to yeah, you yeah. and all the classical music lovers out there. Unfortunately, I'm not a part of that society, but God bless you and your your love for there it. There you go. It takes all sorts, Jerry. Indeed. And Dara, the last question I have, my man, on the rapid fire round is, or, or the not so rapid fire round, is um, what's been your favorite holiday location? Um, I would say France. Definitely. Okay. Um, I think just from the point of view that like I have some very good memories from my teenage years when my parents would have taken us a couple of times camping in France. I love camping, anything outdoor, I love that. Um, I'm not really a hotels guy, I prefer being out in a tent or a caravan. And then with my own kids, uh, we had some really brilliant holidays, just again, camping in France. So yeah, I, I love the French campsites. I love the the croissants and the the, the bread in the morning, that whole eating outside thing. That's, yeah, that's what I love in holiday. Brilliant. They, they, the French do breakfast well. They certainly do. They you certainly know. do. Yeah. yeah. And getting the fish from the market then and cooking it up outside, that kind of thing. Yeah. Wow. Can't beat it. Brilliant. <laughs> so you could be a tour guide for anyone looking to go to France anytime soon, huh? Absolutely. Sign me up. If they can pay <laughs> for that. If they can pay for the trip, I'll go. Wow, wow. That, 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 that's an offer some people may not be able to resist, huh? <laughs> but Dara, we're going to move on to a this a segment that I like to just have where, obviously, it's called Hope Sessions, yeah. and everyone that comes on has a story of hope. And for me, hope is not this idea of, I hope life goes well, but we know as believers in Jesus that hope for us is a person, and it is Jesus. And yeah. when I talk about someone's story of hope, it's about how the person of hope came into your situation and transformed it. I've heard parts of your testimony from you preaching in our church and from one-on-one -on -one conversations, but for the guests listening, they may not know who Dara is or how he came to faith in Jesus. So would you share your testimony for us? Will do, Jerry, absolutely. Um, if you don't mind, I just, I probably need to go back to my parents a little bit because it was yeah. it's kind of about how the Lord moved in our family, really. Yeah. Um, so my dad uh, was, he, he was training to be a priest in Minute Seminary back in the 60s. Wow. Uh, obviously, before, before he was my dad, let me hear yeah. dad, when he was, he was, he was single. He's from, Cork, he's my mum are both from Cork City. Sure. And um, he left this, he left the seminary after a few years just for his own reasons. He, he, he felt that the priesthood wasn't for him. Yeah. He got married to my mum, who ironically had nearly become a nun. <laughs> wow. So, between the two of them, they nearly didn't make it to marriage at all. Like, but, um, <laughs> so yeah, they they got married. I came along then, and uh, I suppose the the first kind of point then in that sort of that involving me was when I was born. I was born premature, and I had a, a, a serious issue with my lungs. Okay. And apparently, it was touch and go whether I'd survive or not. So my dad, he actually. Uh, I think he told me he went into a chapel and called out on the Lord to have mercy on me, even though he wasn't born again at the time. Yeah. And that if the Lord saved my life, he would give his life to the Lord. And uh, anyway, I obviously, I obviously got better. I think it was because I was born in Maynooth. I was lucky because I, I was in a, or in Dublin. They had the, the correct machine equipment there for me. Yeah. So, um, 
few years later then, I think I was about four, um, my dad heard that one of the guys in the seminary with him had got religion. Now, Jerry, here's a strange link <laughs> between you and me. Mm. Um, your nephew's granduncle yeah. was the guy who went to the seminary with my dad, Aoife's uncle, Billy O'Mahony. What? Yeah, so they were they were seminary mates together. <laughs> so wow. there's the kind of strange link across. Um and Billy had had been born again, had, had yeah. found the Lord. And my dad heard something had gone on with Billy, that he'd been they, you know, they were the cork lads in the seminary along with another man. Yeah. Who also became a Christian. And uh so he went he went to Cork. We were living in Limerick at the time. He he made went on a mission to Cork. To find out what had happened, Billy, and he, I think at the time he was also reminded of his promise to the Lord that he would give his life to the Lord yeah. if if he if my life was saved. So, and I actually remember it's one of my earliest memories. I remember some memories of of pubs and that from before then, before yeah. this time. And then I remember going with I was with my dad. We went into the bookshop in Tucky Street where Billy was 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 running the bookshop at the time. I remember holding my dad's hand and going in the door and uh, him going in to ask Billy what was what, what was this story, what had happened to him. Yeah. And uh, I remember actually my dad was 70 there last year. I remember saying to him, like, of all the things he did in his whole life, all the good things he did for us, that's the one decision I'm so glad he took. Wow. That he made that trip to Cork to go meet with Billy and find out what was what was this strange thing that had happened to him. So as a result of that, my dad uh, got saved and my mom as well. Yeah. So I grew up from then, I suppose, whatever, four or five, whatever age I was, then, you know, hearing the gospel, hearing that, well, you know, you need to give your life to the Lord. And yeah. um, but you know, I, I actually remember even as a kid, I knew it was true, but I didn't want it. And I, I couldn't even explain to you why. It was like something in me was resisting it. Because, you know, as a kid, then you were supposed to pray, Lord, come into my life or save me. Yeah. And I distinctly remember the prayer that I used to pray in my in my family prayers. It was, Lord, save me soon. Mm -hmm. And I put in that word soon because I didn't want it now. Yeah. Somehow or other, I had a sense that it was a committing of myself that I didn't want to do, even though I was only like seven or eight or nine or whatever. Yeah. So it was, I, I sometimes think back on that and think, you know, the human heart is amazing. Even as a child, you you, you know, you know, and you resist, yeah. you know. And what happened then was there was a period of time in in the the, the meetings, the, the services we would be going to at the time in the, in the church, and there was this song they were singing, which began to really hit me and affect me. And the, the chorus of the song was, what a day that will be when my Jesus I will see, when I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace, when he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land. What a day, glorious day that will be. That was the song. And I just, it just overwhelmed me when they sing that. I remember. Yeah. I would start crying. I couldn't cope with it because it was just in my head. I'm not going to see Jesus. He won't take me by the hand. Mm. I'm not right with God. And uh, I used to, my mother used to have to take me out of the meeting and I would say to her, oh, I'm tired or something. I make some excuse. Yeah. And this happened a few times. And I remember one night it happened and I'd, I had to leave the meeting again because I was upset about this. And I went off up, up home. And uh, that night I just said, right, I, I, I think I was maybe 10, nine or 10. I have to ask the Lord to save me now, <laughs> not soon. Yeah. So I did. Now I don't really remember that night, uh, the, you know, me praying. I remember praying, but I don't remember a whole pile about it. Sure. But I do remember the following day, um, my cousin, uh, she was always asking me, Dara, have you been? Are you saved yet? Because she had been, she had been born again, and she's beyond on to me. You know, yeah. Dara, what about it? Have you, have you have you got saved yet? And uh, that day she asked me in front of her her mom and that and I kind of hesitated and I said uh, yeah I, I I have actually last night mm. and it was when I said it yeah 
I just felt such a joy in myself. Wow. And I knew it was true. Yeah. And I always think back on that. And I think of the scripture, you know, if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth, yeah. the Lord Jesus, you will be saved. And I remember feeling such a joy inside, having said it to my aunt and to my cousin that I had yeah. that I had got saved. So th that to me was the moment then I think like that it was I was absolutely sure inside that the Lord had saved me. I confessed yeah. it. I told it, told it out. Um, yeah. So that that was that was kind of the I suppose the the initial point for me in in my Christian life. Hmm. Maybe just to talk about one other thing, Jerry, from yeah, my sure. my my youth that I think was so important for me. Um, when I was thirteen, um, I was baptized in the Holy Spirit in a, in a, in a service. Yeah, and that to me was a major. I suppose that was the second major, major turning point for me because it really did something in my life as a teenager. It yeah. it sort of brought me into a whole new dimension of the supernatural, kind of opened my understanding of the word of God. It was it was more than just the ability to speak in other tongues. It sort of opened up something yeah. in the in the spiritual realm for me and really transformed my teenage years. It really, really did. And that's why I, I just I always like to encourage if I get a chance, any any teenagers, look, go after that. Yeah. That's it there for you. And it was, you know, it's why I was so delighted at the weekend you and I were at the Elevate Youth Weekend in, yeah. in the Vocal last week to see that last night, Pastor Stephen leading those young people into this wonderful, wonderful um, reality of the baptism yeah. of the Holy Spirit. Because that to me really just it turned my teenage years around and made such a difference. And I suppose, yeah, that that's it really, Jerry. That's my, that's my testimony of salvation. It's yeah. since then it's, it's the journey. We're all on a journey. It's following Christ. It's good times and bad times, hills and valleys, you know, yeah. having to tr learn to trust the Lord, having to learn to grow in him, having to learn to hear his voice, having to know his deliverance, his help, you know, the, the Christian life basically. But that's yeah, right. that's how I came to the Lord. Praise God. I love it. You, I actually never knew that link, though, between your family and my family. Yeah. Especially. You know, that's... There you go. Yeah, um, I know. The brotherly <laughs> bond has just got even stronger, huh? <laughs> wow. Praise God. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I was even thinking, you know, as, as you mentioned about when you were in church and you heard that song, and the song just really caused the tears. It caused really yeah. a conviction but a conviction from love more so than conviction from judgment, right? Because I know when I was, when I was, um, I suppose, as I call it, playing around with the Christian idea of faith, you know, because my brother Danny, when he came home from Tiglin, which is a rehab center, he had to go to a, a Christian born again, Bible believing church. So I was like, okay, I'll go support my brother, you know, the whole Irish thing. I'll support you, but it's not really for me. But yet when I was going, the worship was deeply affecting me. Mm. To the point where I would cry, but I would like try to conceal my tears because obviously you're a guy, you have to like man up and be, yeah. you know. But I, I remember there was one song in particular by a gospel singer called Carrie Job. She has a powerful song called The Revelation Song, and it's talking about heaven, like, like similar to your uh, situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I never heard heaven, I suppose, being declared and rejoiced at in that way. I always thought heaven was like, where we just play on clouds with harps and kind of just like do the worship team for Jesus. And I, I didn't, uh, to me, it was, heaven was always just this fluffy idea to yeah, for yeah. lack of a better term. And then you read the Bible and you discover the reality of, of new earth and new heaven, new earth and creation being restored, us being restored, being um eternally kept together with Jesus and our loved ones that have fell asleep in the Lord, as the Bible says. And, that really affected me. So worship has a big part of my life. Sometimes it's it's like the book of Psalms, isn't it? In in a sense, because Psalms give give our emotions and our thoughts words that we may not be able to vocalize. It's true, isn't it? Yeah. You know, and so, often I yeah, absolutely, Jerry. No, I mean it, it, often I find you're going through a tough time even as a Christian, or you're going through a great time, and really you 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 find an expression of that in the worship. Yeah. And you find the Lord's presence in the worship. It's it's really yeah, you're right. It's, there's something special about it, and yeah, I suppose it never until you're saying that there it never struck me like that. I suppose my 
why Christian reality began with a song. Yeah. You know, and yeah, it's it goes on with it goes on in a song. It goes on in in worship and in adoration of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it surely does. Because even to think about, I suppose, a song in a sense, like I was on YouTube one day watching a video from Eminem because I was a teenager who loves hip hop. Yeah. yeah. And then on, on YouTube, there's that tab called the Related Video tab where they recommend videos based on what you're watching. And I just added a random song by this guy called Lecrae called Don't Waste Your Life. I thought, oh, cool kind of song, you know. I didn't know that Lecrae is the biggest Christian hip-hop artist in the world. And I remember listening to the song, and though I wasn't encouraged, I was challenged, convicted, mm. and as a result of that, I was angry. I didn't want nothing to do with Jesus. But, but now like nine almost ten years later I'm thankful for the fact that Lecrae had enough faith to release that video put it on YouTube because he didn't realize that a guy in Ireland was going to be introduced to the gospel from that message um okay, yeah it's you know so it's quite powerful to, to, to see that the the reality of of stepping out in faith with whatever it is that's in your hand and trusting that God will use that to reach the multitudes you know and even I suppose yeah. I want to ask you a question Daryl because you're a preacher, I'm a preacher, you've preached in our church many a times, and I've said this to you in person, but I want to say it again on the podcast for the purposes of honouring you. You are one of the easiest people to listen to in the world. You have been graced with the ability to speak in a way where everyone and anyone can listen to it, can catch. You, you've got a very skillful way of taking people on a journey from the start of your message to the very end. And I wanted to ask you because there's you don't just get up there and open the Bible and go, mm, voila, we're going to talk about this. There's a preparation process that goes into it. And I wanted to ask you, like, what's your, I suppose, your your preaching preparation? What does it look like? Do you have a particular thing or how do yeah. you structure it? I guess, I suppose it's kind of been honed over num over many years, really, Jerry. I suppose I yes. started preaching when I was about 19 or 20. And to, in, in fairness to, to my my old pastor, a man called Noel Flood, he yeah. and he saw that I was that I had that interest and I was always wanting to share in a meeting before I was preaching. Like and he yeah. he kind of got me into the pulpit. Um and actually <laughs> maybe I'll just go back a bit before that. I remember a prayer, yeah. you know, sometimes these prayers you have in your life that you they're significant. Yeah. And I remember in my being in my bedroom one at one point when I was, I think, maybe 17 or 18, and I prayed, I asked the Lord, Lord, whatever you do in my life, make me a man of the, of your word. Because I loved I loved the Bible. I loved it. I loved reading it. And so I suppose that was, I guess some of it is just, it's there in you. The Lord puts yeah. something in you. So there's that. And you know what I mean. I mean, you're a preacher. You know that it's, it's, it's just a desire in you to kind of get into the word of God and to, right. to, um, speak it out you, you know you're not just happy at being locked inside you you want to get it out there that's right so there's there's that that's that's obviously has to be there that that kind of interest in in sort of um speaking it out and and telling others what you just what you've discovered yeah um so that that's one piece of it i suppose in terms of preparation then i suppose yeah over the years you kind of i'd say what i what I always wait for is, um, like I I would find it pretty difficult to prepare a word on a topic I was given. Not 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 impossible, sure. but I find it harder to do that if someone says to me like preach on baptism or something. Mm. I don't find that that easy to do. I know there are some preachers who are really gifted at that. You know, they can actually teach their way through a book or teach their way through a a topic. Sure. I, for me, it's more when I'm reading the word of God myself in my own devotional, I'm always waiting for a kind of a little spark, something mm -hmm. to just jump out at you. Yeah. And I've kind of learned over the years to recognize that. OK, stop, stop. There's something here. There's something here you've got to take notice of. Um, and sometimes that leads to a word. Sometimes it doesn't. That's right. Sometimes it's just for yourself. It's just yeah. to, to help you. But I'm always looking for that kind of little, just like a little piece of fire coming up out of the page at you. Mm. <laughs> Even from a passage you've read a hundred and three hundred times over. Yes. 
that's one piece. Okay, I, I, I kind of note that. I'll, I'll even maybe, maybe jot a few notes down on, on some little thing like that. And that may come to something or it may not, as I say. Yeah. So then let's say, right, I've, I've kind of said, okay, I think this is where the Holy Spirit is leading. I'll kind of just dig at that in terms of reading it again. I'll, be, I'll pray a little bit about it. Um, I'd maybe get two or three other little little side thoughts around it, you know. And you're kind of it's kind of building. It's like sort of a a scaffolding. Yes. And typically, it takes me. I would say with with work, um, you know, when you don't have all day to do this, usually, best case, you know, it takes a few days yeah. at a minimum, you know, sure. um, where you're kind of churning and you're letting it kind of build. But. I'm having got the spark, having built a few things around it, I suppose what I'm what I'm looking for then is I always try to look for how can I how can I structure this and express it in a in a way? How can I capture this like in in, in maybe three sub areas? Yeah. And how, how do I put some impact around them? And I'm kind of not happy until until I have that. Yeah. So I'm, I, I've kind of learned to wait for those kind of three things, the initial spark, the few little thoughts around it that kind of build it together. And then I'm finally, I'm always waiting for just, and you're just looking to the Lord for that kind of, what's the framework that I put this around? What's the kind of punchline? What's the sort of the three headings or three kind of, how do I subdivide this? I need that structure in my own head. Yeah. But, Cause I find it, I actually find it difficult to preach without that. Oh yeah. Like, I, I, for example, Pastor Nick, I love his preaching, but, mm. but it, it it's just, it's just like, it's like a, it flows out of him. That's right. It's like a kind of a river. Yeah. And, but for me, I need a sort of a, I, I need this framework. And I know he probably has his own way that he comes at that. I need a framework in my own spirit and mind to communicate it. So that's, I think that's just, that's just me. It's just my, my way, my style. I hope that, I hope it does make it easier to easy to listen to. Yeah. Um, because I find I I, I struggle to preach if I don't have that. Oh, so that's just the way my 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 own mind and heart works. So they're kind of my three phases, Jerry. That's yeah. I love that. The, is that does that make any sense? No, oh, hey, total sense. For me, for me, I'm kind of similar to you. There's kind of there's three there's three subheadings. There's uh yeah. the introduction, you know, intro taking people on a journey, what you're gonna talk about. Yeah, and then the yeah, passage yeah. of scripture that you're you're diving into or what you're addressing, you want to make sure you have. I always want to make sure I have the context, make sure yeah. it's, it's not what I'm trying to say, but it's actually what God had intended for it to be said as. And then obviously you'll yeah. have a closing part where obviously you, you bring people either to a decision or a moment where you want to pray with them. But I've also learned, Dara, that. You know, obviously you spend time preparing your sermons and researching and reading different translations and praying yeah. and asking the Lord to bring clarity to the word that he has given yeah, you. Yeah. Because it weighs on my heart quite heavy, but not heavy in, in a condemnation sense, but it's like you, you've you been graced with an opportunity to speak to God's people. So I, I don't want to get up there and speak as Jerry D. I want to get up there and ha allow the Lord himself to speak through me in spite of what I say and what I don't say. Exactly. You know, exactly. because that's yeah. that's really what it is, that the name of Jesus is lifted up, right? Bible, the Bible talks about it. If you lift him up, he'll draw all men onto himself. So for me, it's I get excited when I preach. I like yeah. to use my hands and yeah. people think I'm doing Pictionary when I preach because my hand like, <laughs> like even now I'm doing sign language. It's not, don't worry, it's just me talking. But I've learned that I suppose to the end of my rabbit trail um is my 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 notes are, are a compass. Not yeah. the guideline in the sense that because sometimes I find that I could get so focused on wanting to say everything in order because it's all ordered on my sheet. And then you can kind of lose, I suppose, the fluidity for a lack of a better yeah, word. Yeah, no. And you yeah, become yeah. so stuck to this rather than allowing the Holy Spirit to give you a spontaneous moment where he'll bring a scripture to mind or an analogy or an event in your life or Maybe like for me, I know that the Lord speaks powerfully through life. I'm in work and a part of my job, obviously, you know, I work in security in Maham Point. And I suppose an aspect to my job is we help find lost children. It's something I can understand is you can lose your phone, you can lose your keys, you can lose your wallet, no problem. But I, I can't grasp the idea of losing your child. To me, that doesn't make sense. It's yeah. just 
stupid, in my opinion. <laughs> Apologies for the strong term it is. And the longest time was there was a young girl. She was lost for 45 minutes. Oh, my. We were oh walk, my. up and down the shopping center in every shop doing announcements. Yeah, on the yeah, TV. Yeah. But what really struck me was one particular time when the when the young girl found her mom and dad, they embraced her. And there was just such that sweet reunion. I remember going home and I was just talking to the Lord. I was like, Lord, what's like, is there something in that that you're trying to teach me? And he, and he brought me to the passage of, you know, the wayward son being welcomed back home. And that developed into a sermon. Now, that doesn't always Very happen. Yeah, 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 it's, yeah. The God is always speaking through life situations. Yeah, like you yeah. could encourage me and suddenly it's like, oh, that's a word for me really right now what I'm experiencing. But I love that because as preachers, like, we're always in the preacher mode does that make sense you're always thinking it does you're always you're always looking for you're always kind of thinking oh you know trying to is there something in this yeah event or or lesson that i've just learned that i can yeah absolutely you, you oh, you're, yeah. you're in that mode all the time like you're gonna not that you go into preaching mode right i better start preparing something you're kind yeah. of constantly looking at and you mentioned that kind of spontaneity i i love when that happens it's yeah it doesn't i would say doesn't happen all the time by any means, but when you're kind of taken beyond your notes and beyond even what you've prepared and the Holy Spirit just kind of gives you a liberty to sort of go off, that that's those are precious times, you know. I think that's yeah, it's 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 lovely when that happens. It really is. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. funnily enough, I would say like I, I tend to pr prepare quite a quite a bit just because that's the way I am. Yeah. But some of the most and this I, I think it's a case of not making this the rule but it's the exception some yeah. of the most wonderful helps i've known in preaching are when i've almost had no preparation time i've been put on the spot in a situation and i literally have like five bullet points and that's it and i i you know and yet maybe because you're in that situation the lord just uses it and you're you're almost more dependent on him in a way so yeah it, i love it i there, you, you can follow certain patterns, but I think you always have to be open to the leading of the Holy Spirit or to the to him just taking over completely. You know, that's, right. that's yeah the nature of it. Yeah, absolutely. And even I, I wasn't planned to ask this, but I think this would be a really good way, I suppose, to wrap up the podcast episode. So we've been talking about Jesus, obviously. We've been talking about preaching and, and how we prepare sermons. But we also have a devotional life, Dara, right? You know, as believers, yeah. we, what devotional life means is we set aside time in our day or week where we will spend time reading the word. And I suppose I wanted to ask you, maybe, is there something you would encourage our listeners in, maybe in their own devotional time? Is there something that maybe instead of just reading like a passage and just kind of looking at a few verses and going, oh, that's enough for today. Maybe is there an encouragement you would have for them to kind of go deeper in their devotional life? Is there a resource or anything that you could offer for them? Um, it's a tricky one now. Uh, like for me, it, it really is. It's 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 the basics, Jerry. It's, it's yeah. prayer and the Word of God. I I right. I do tend. I mean, I, I I sometimes use other materials, but no. To me, it's the basics. It's, it's prayer. It's the Word of God. I, one thing I would say. One thing I've learned, and it's sometimes not easy to do, depending on your living situation. And it's a very small point, but I have found it to be so important. And it's this, it's pray out loud. Yeah. Pray out loud. I mean, I know it can be hard to find a spot to do that. But if you have to go into the car, even if you can't do it every day, find a time and place to pray out loud. Yeah. On your own. And I can't even articulate why it matters, but it does. That's right. I have found times when I really need the Lord's help or guidance and I'm serious. I have to pray out loud to him because you, you kind of, if you're just praying sort of in your head or praying kind of, you know, I suppose like under your breath or whatever, whatever way you do, given your circumstances. Yeah. And I know it sounds stupid. It's like, well, what difference does that make? Hannah prayed with her mouth moving and, you know, yeah. Eli asked her what was wrong with her. So it's not it's not that again this is not a rule that's right. not living under some kind of legal system yeah. but just as a thing to help i think in prayer i think having those times when you just 
pray things out. Like it's like the way you and me are talking. We're distinct. We're making statements. You're yeah. you're asking the Lord things. You're being definite with Him. There's a seriousness in your prayer with the Lord in yeah. that. That's that's just something I've learned, Jerry. I can't even explain why, but it does make a difference. Yeah. That's right. So, I suppose I wanted to offer, I suppose, an encouragement to our listeners as we quickly wrap up the episode that it's not about the length of what you read or you don't have to read 50 chapters. You no. could read two or three verses and it could your eyes could be illuminated. Just ask the Holy Spirit to come and illuminate his word so that you can see his word for yourself. Um, it's not about what you read, but it's about how you read. Get into the word, set mm -hmm. aside time, you know, and, and be encouraged. I used to always put myself under condemnation of thinking that I wasn't reading enough because I was so busy or tired or some days I didn't feel great or whatever. But get into the word, fight the feelings. Yeah. They're just feelings. They're going to change. Get into the word and allow the word to change you. But Absolutely. I wanted to say this just to, to close up. Dara, I want to thank you so much for giving up of your time. Um, you are a remarkable friend. You are an example to me and many other people that are in our church and even the people listening. Thank you for giving up of your time. Guys, for those of you that have tuned in, thank you so much for tuning in. If something that we have said has encouraged you, don't be afraid to reach out to us and let us know. Share it with a friend. But And remember, the hope is to life as oxygen is to the body. Till next time, take care. God bless. Hey guys, thanks again for tuning in to another episode of the Hope Sessions podcast with me, Jerry D. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to this podcast wherever you're tuning into it from. This greatly helps to spread the word about the podcast, but also to encourage other people to check it out for themselves. Um, until next week, take care, God bless, and don't forget, hope is to life as oxygen is to the body. Take care.